I am very pleased, of course, and happy that Uppsala University has taken the initiative to arrange what has become a regular Uppsala Health Summit. Because I think that this is a clear indication of the commitment of Swedish researchers, but also a broad range of actors engaged in global health. And my uh, role and pleasure is, of course, to welcome you here to Sweden and to Uppsala, but also to underscore the importance that the Swedish government attaches to global health and the health of people across the world. And we do that through our long-standing and engaged development cooperation, which will have an even stronger budget presented the coming year. The theme of this summit is the global health threats. And indeed, we live in a world, of course, with a lot of opportunities, but also numerous threats and challenges of different kind. Endemic disease and a multitude of interlinked drivers of change, as was mentioned initially. Climate change, degradation of ecosystems, population growth being some of them are threats and challenges that we need to turn into opportunities. And we need people like you, people with knowledge that can actually show us how to do this. I think it is also uh, increasingly clear to all of us that the north-south divide of health is becoming absolute. Global health problems are just that. They are global. And this conference is about One Health, meaning that we need to take a more comprehensive approach, and in this case include both, for instance, animal and human issues, and the agricultural and health sectors. I believe it is very important, as reality has taught us, that we cannot work in silos, and we cannot limit our actions into different sectors. One good example of this is how the Swedish government, and I know that many of you are also engaged in this, has put antimicrobial resistance, AMR, into the agenda. The Swedish strategy for AMR takes a multi-sectoral approach, including both animals and human aspects. And I'm also very proud to say that we are doing quite well, actually, in terms of the very low levels of use of antibiotics in raising animal husbandry and food production, as well as the pres prescription, of course, prescription rates, of course, to patients by doctors. But globally, a lot remains to be done, and Sweden is and will be an active partner in the international work. Sweden's global engagement is guided by a very promising agenda, which was taken just some few years back, at the same year as we also decided on a climate agreement in Paris. In 2015, our world leaders decided on an agenda, Agenda 2030, that should present sustainable development goals guided uh, also by, by indicators to showcase how we turn this into action. What is important to remember is that it is a global agenda relevant for all countries across the world and that we have a joint responsibility for the implementation at home, but also globally. And of course then, health is an intrinsic part of the Agenda 2030. And there is a specific goal on health, the SDG 3. But that goal can only be achieved through actions and coherence across the whole agenda, including more or less all the SDGs. Because if we're going uh, to work with SDG 3, we need to see that it is one of the most ambitious goals. The goal is not only about ensuring that people will survive by reducing child and health mortality, for instance, but also to enable people to live healthy lives. If we're going to maximize healthy life expectancy for people as compared to, well, only saving lives or uh, treating diseases, it will require a totally different mindset and approach for all of us. The starting point must be to empower and equip people to be able to make more healthy choices for themselves and for their families. And this is a whole new prevention agenda that we have only started to develop. And we need to do a lot more. Sweden's government is also engaging a lot in resilient health systems. When we entered into government in 2014, the Ebola outbreak was at its peak. 
and it shows us that resilient health system is, according to the Lancet, a health system that which can cope with the stress, for instance, like the Ebola outbreak, and at the same time maintain normal health services. And, and this is very important, draw lessons which evolve, develop and improve systems for the future. So I think all of us understand the importance why Swedish development cooperation needs to be a long-standing partnership in many countries. We need resilience in our societies for health, and we need resilience for our planet's survival at large. We need to ensure that everyone has equal opportunity to access health, service and sexual and reproductive health and rights are of special importance to the Swedish feminist government. We have an opportunity to better connect our work for health with our actions for environment and climate. And one example of this is how we recently in Sweden have invested into people's possibilities to use bikes instead of cars. It's just one small example, but it shows that we need to work with the Swedish emissions to take our responsibility as well as we are also responsible for supporting countries in the developing world. An example of an action which has a positive health, this is an example of an action that has positive uh, health as well as climate effects. What we eat and how we produce food is of course another area where I believe that we can do much more and we can do better. And again, an area where we can see the increased synergies between health, environment and climate. Let me finish by two good news. The Swedish government has just published a report on our development assistance to health last year in 2016, and we can report a substantive increase in our engagement. Sweden has invested uh, more than 4.6 billion kroner and 14% of the total aid in the year of 2016. And we will invest even more this year and even more the coming year. So the second good news is, as I mentioned initially, that the Swedish government has presented our suggested budget for international development cooperation to the parliament. We stay with a 1% Gini goal, and since Swedish economy is doing quite well, we will have uh, the biggest cooperation budget that we have presented ever. And health, of course, will continue to be a priority and one of the main pillars of the work that we do. But we will also focus in our engagement of the protected crisis and the humanitarian support that the world needs. Only half of the humanitarian uh, support is there. Conflict and, uh, and conflict-ridden countries are uh, a priority for the Swedish government, and we are also prioritizing the area of climate change and environment. So let me finish by stating uh, that what is good for the planet and what is good for the climate is also good for people's health, and what is good for people's health is also good for the planet. There is no contradiction, only an important win-win opportunity and I look forward to listening to all the experience that this conference will bring and to see to that we can improve even more our engagement from the Swedish government in global health. Thank you very much.